Hi, in this video, we will learn how to create an automated data entry form in Excel. It's easy and simple. Even if you are a beginner in Excel, don't worry. At the end of the video, you will be surprised to see that you have an automated data entry form in your hand. Just follow my step-by-step -step guide. By the way, you will also find all these steps written down on my website called excelmind.com where you can check out other Excel tutorials that you may like as well. The website address is given in the video description below. Let's see the demo file of data entry form so that you know what you're going to create today. As you can see, if you click the launch button, the data entry form will pop up where you can enter data based on your design. You can also click on reset button to clear the form to get ready for the next entry or rewrite the current entry. Let's make an entry into the form. Click save and it will ask for your permission to save. If you click on yes, you see the second record is added into your database. You can also see the data in your database Excel sheet. Close the data entry form and click on the database tab. You now see the observations that you have just entered into your database. You now know what your goal is. Let's create this project from the scratch. Open your Excel and click File and Save As. In the dialog box, using Browse, define the path where you want to save your data file. Name your file as Automated Data Entry Form. Make sure that the Save As type you selected is Excel Macro Enable Workbook. Without this, you won't be able to write macro. Click on Save and see the file name that you selected on top. Your Excel should show Developer tab. If it is not showing, just click File, Options, Customize Ribbon. Put a tick mark on Developer and click on OK. This will make Developer tab visible on Excel Ribbon. Now, rename the default sheet to Home. Click on View and uncheck the grid line. Click on Insert. Under Illustration Group, click Shape. Select Rounded Rectangle and drag and draw a rounded rectangle. Shape the rectangle so that it looks like a button. Add text on the button for the user to know what it is going to do. Add one more sheet and name it as database. Now write the column headers. These column headers are actually the variable names. Resize the column headers so that entries are visible in each cell. Select row 1 or column headers and apply some color and text effect. Select the range to show all borders. Uncheck the grid line for the sheet. Let's go to developer tab and click on Visual Basic to open Microsoft Visual Basic for applications. Insert user form. Resize the form as to height 325 and width 578. Give a name as FRM form. This will be used to write the code. 
Keep caption as automated data entry form. Now, from the toolbox, insert a frame. Change the caption to enter details. Change border style to one, border color to highlight. Insert another frame. Change the caption to database. Also change the border style and color as you like. Now add six labels. You can use Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy and paste them. Change the captions for all based on the header name. Add four text boxes. Add two radio buttons in front of gender and change captions to male and female. Add one combo box in front of department. Add two command buttons right below country text box. Change the caption to save and reset. You can also change the color of buttons. For the sake of easy coding, we need to name each of the items. For example, select employee ID text box from the properties Change name to TXT ID. Select EMP name text box. Change name to text name. Select mail radio button. Change name to OPT mail. Select female radio button. Change name to OPT female. Select department combo box. Change name to CMB department. Select city text box. Change name to TXT city. Select country text box. Change name to TXT country. Select command save. Change name to CMD save. And accelerator as S. Select command reset. Change name to CMD reset and accelerator as R. Insert a list box in the database frame. Change the name to LST database. Now we can set the tab orders so that users can move through the items sequentially when pressing tab on their keyboards. To do so, we select EMP text box first and assign tab index as one from the property. You can do the rest according to your preferred order. To check what the form looks like, click on run or hit F5 on your keyboard. As you can see, our form looks nice but you can always resize or move items in the form according to your likings. Let's move on to writing the VVA code. Again, if you want to just copy and paste all the codes, you can do so by going to the website excelmind.com. The link to the website is given in the video description below. Open a module by clicking insert and module. To reset the form controls and initialize the form, write sub reset. Declare a variable called iRow as long. To save last row into the variable, write count a function inside. If you have two entries, it's going to return two, but row is three, wherein first row is the header. To initialize the form, we're going to clear all the values first. We clear the combo box first and then assign values to the combo box. You can assign any value you like. Now, initialize the list box. Remember, we have nine columns in our database. We also assign the width of each of the nine columns.
So far we have written code for reset button. Let's write some more codes for save button. For that we will again create subroutine such as sub submit. Declare a variable for our worksheet. To hold the last row which is blank we declare another variable as i row. Now assign the worksheet name to sh variable. Now assign last blank row to i row variable. First column is serial number, so we write serial number in it. Second column is for employee ID. Likewise, you write the code for the rest. But notice that for column 4, 8 and 9, we are writing different code as they are username and submitting time. The last subroutine is for the form. We write sub show form. To summarize, we have three modules that we can call whenever necessary. First call would be when a user click on save button. That means we need to write something inside save button. Let's open the form and double click on save button. Now declare a variable which is a message box. We are going to supply information in the message and ask user if they want to save the record or not. If they click yes, it's going to call the module that we wrote previously. If they click no, it's going to exit the subroutine. Now copy all the code and paste in the reset button. We like to edit little bit where necessary. We need to write another private subroutine for form initialization. Now save everything and click debug and compile to see if there is any error. Looks like there is no error. Click on the Excel icon at the corner. From the Home tab, right click on Launch button and assign the macro named Show Form. Let's launch the form. As you can see, you have a nice data entry form. Let's enter a record and see whether it saves the entry the way you want it. So, first entry is made. Let's make some more entries. You can see that each observation is listed in the form. Now, to cross check if your database has these entries or not, you can click the database tab and see exactly same entries there. In future videos, I can show how you can add delete and edit buttons in the form to manipulate your existing database. If you like to see that, please comment below. I would like to remind you again that you can copy and paste all the codes from my website excelmind.com. The website link is also in the video description. You may be able to download a copy of the file from my website as well. Thanks for watching this video.